even though today is a feast day, the um, mass, the, the readings today are taken from the, what would be the 26th Sunday after Pentecost. But since we have extra Sundays, we go back to taking the Sundays after Epiphany. So the mass today actually is that for the sixth Sunday after Epiphany. Therefore, the epistle appointed to be read today is taken from the first epistle of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brethren, we give thanks to God always for you all, continually making a remembrance of you in our prayers, being mindful before God and our Father of your work of faith and labor and charity and your enduring hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. We know, brethren, beloved of God, how you were chosen. For our gospel was not delivered to you in word only, but in power also, and in the Holy Spirit, and in much fullness, as indeed you know what manner of men we have been among you for your sakes. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great tribulation with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became a pattern to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has been spread abroad, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we need say nothing further. For they themselves report concerning us how we entered among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to await from heaven Jesus, his son, whom he raised from the dead, who has delivered us from the wrath to come. And the Holy Gospel. is taken from St. Matthew in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. At that time, Jesus spoke this parable to the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field. This indeed is the smallest of all the deeds, seeds and when it grows up, it is larger than any herb and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and dwell in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and buried in three measures of flowers until all of it was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables and without parables he did not speak to them, that what was spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the foundation of the world. Thus for this Sunday's Holy Gospel. My beloved people, First of all, this morning, I would like to bring to your attention and ask for uh, special prayers for our sister Bernadette, who uh, is going through some very, uh, some pretty serious sickness. And um, it's been a long time and she suffers much she can hardly eat. We've been trying to get to doctors, but you know how it is today. Um, so um, I ask for your prayers in her behalf. This morning, there will be catechism class after the 10 o'clock mass, and uh, parents are encouraged to send the children to the catechism classes as we have them. Normally, we would have benediction and special vespers today, as we do on any Sundays. But today is an unusual day in that it is the feast of Benedictine All Saints. 
And tomorrow is the, cel is the commemoration of Benedictine All Souls, very similar to the first of the month when we had All Saints and All Souls. Therefore, today we will have Vespers at the normal time, 5 o'clock, but we will have two Vespers today. The first Vespers, of course, will be festive with the gold and all the flowers and all the, uh, the majesty of the occasion. And then as soon as those are over, all of a sudden, everything is ripped off of the altar and it turns to mourning. It turns to our reflection on the souls in purgatory. It's very dramatic and very beautiful, and very simple. So that's why we cannot have benediction today. As I have just said, today is the feast of Benedictine All Saints. I ask your prayers that you pray to these saints. They're our saints. They're peculiar to us. They've walked our way of life. They've lived our way of life. And they have achieved uh, the reward that goes with living such a life of penance and mortification. Tomorrow is All Souls Day for, for the, for, that we celebrate for those of us who have not yet paid all of our debt to Almighty God for the sins that we have committed through life. But I will not dwell on that today because we've got some other things that I have to bring to your attention because of the coming, uh, the coming occasion of the feast uh, of, the, of the coming occasion of Advent. And there are several things that we need to be uh, aware of for the coming season. First of all, the season of Advent is a beautiful season. It's a wonderful season. It is a season of expectation. It is a season of hope, of hope to be delivered from all of the torments and the wars and the agonies and the killings and the way of life that was peculiar to those days prior to the coming of our blessed Lord. But it is a day that we should work then in a way, a time that we should work uh, in our own way to prepare ourselves. We all know about the Advent wreath and that we uh, earnestly encourage the Advent wreath in the family and to follow the directions that all of us know next week. There will be in the vestibule at the usual little purple leaflets uh, that uh, each of you should pick up, and this should be enough for everybody, uh, pick up and carry home, take home with you to get things ready for the Advent wreath. Also next week here, on the steps or wherever Father puts it, uh, you will find the usual tray with the little packets of blessed wheat. Now, newcomers might need to have this explained. What in the world was blessed wheat? Well, the first, I'll start off with directions. I suggest that for each member of the family, father and mother included, that we get, you know, these little aluminum uh, roast pans that they sell in the stores, not the largest, not the medium sized ones, and that we put some potting soil in it. And that with the little packets of blessed wheat, there should be enough grains in there that every time during the period of Advent that we have done something to curb our usual inclinations, our cuss words, our fits of anger, Our fits of blasphemies, 
our fits of pride, our fits of whatever else plagues us in daily life. And that we take for each one of these and we will go and pick up one of those little grains of wheat. I held back my temper. One grain of wheat planted. I did not cuss. One grain of wheat planted. I was respectful to my wife or to whoever. One grain of wheat planted. Little children, I was obedient to my mother and father. One grain of wheat planted. And it goes on and on and on and on. And we plant each little grain of wheat in mothers and fathers. Be careful that the little children don't overwater or drown them away. But you know how to do it. Make sure, keep an eye. And each little container has mother's name, has father's name, has little Jack, has little Mary, as little Joseph, as little whoever else. And each one of these, as we see the grains of wheat begin to sprout, and they will, begin to sprout and to grow. And on Christmas Eve, when we all make our little trip to the Christmas crib, mother and father and children and everyone, each one, carrying his little pot with the grains of wheat that have sprouted. My beloved people, all the frankincense and the myrrh and the gold of the world will not be as valuable and as priceless is that little tub of dirt with some grains of wheat sprouting in it? Now will it? There is no gold that will come close to the value of that little thing with dirt, ordinary dirt, simple with a grain of wheat that is growing, showing that I was able to control this or that in me. There's nothing else you can give of greater importance. And the amount of humility it takes by father and by mother who set the example, you don't have to say to anybody, now I was a good girl today, so I planted a soul of grain of wheat. Silence. The only one who must know what that grain of wheat is all about is Christ himself alone. Nobody else. That's strictly between you and God. It must be kept in the silence, in the privacy, in the secrecy of your heart. No greater gift can be brought to God than that. That's another custom. This year, we're going to bring another custom in. And I know some of you are going to jump, but that's all right. You go ahead and jump all you want to. And that is, my dear people, the custom of the blessing of the bread.
You mothers, if you don't know how to bake bread, you're being told in plenty of time so that you can learn how. Because you're going to bake some bread. On the fourth Sunday of Advent, you will bring that bread into this church. You will wrap it festively, identify it. You can break, you can uh, bake as many loaves as you want, but only one loaf is important. But you can break, bake others if you wish. Festively wrap that bread and bring it to this church, and there will be again a table or whatever the Father provides, and put that bread on the table. Fourth Sunday of Advent. The last Sunday before Christmas, and the priest will come down. He will bless that bread, but it's going to be more than just taking home blessed bread. Now starts the work. First of all, let us emphasize the fact that the Father in the house. Is the patriarch. That's the way it is. And the father has strong work to do that day. And as they all the family, he gathers all of his family, and they all sit together at the table, at the main meal. And the father sits in his place at the first place of the table. That's his place, at the head of the table. Next week you'll be given these pages. You will know all about it. I'm just preparing you. And the mother then presents him with a loaf. It is not sliced. It is a complete loaf of bread. And the father then, in his own household. At his own table, will bless that bread, and then in charity, and in peace, and in harmony, and in compassion, and mercy, and love, then he will break a piece of that bread. That his wife has given him, the mother has given him. He will break a piece of that bread, and he will reach to his wife, is the mother first, and she will reach out to him to accept and take that piece of bread from his hand. That. Requires strength. That requires moral character. That requires children of God. My beloved people, then the father will break another piece of bread and will hand it to his eldest. In the same way, in peace, in harmony, in forgiveness, in charity, and the eldest will accept and take that piece of bread, and he goes around the table in the same way. My beloved people, is that not raising the Christian order? Into its highest form of expression, we do not here speak of the strictnesses and whatever, whatever, whatever. We simply speak in the simplicity of life, in the little things of life that put strength into what we ourselves must live. 
Our lives are not lives of pleasure. We'd like for them to be, but they aren't. From the first moment that he touched this earth to the last moment when he left this earth, he suffered. And what was his instruction? What was one of his principal instructions? Right quick did he say, take up thy cross and follow me. My beloved people, neither you nor I are exempt from this. And in taking up that cross, everything that we are called upon to do is presented to us. And all the way through, you hear him say this, you have heard it said, But I say to you, do it this way. You have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you to do it this way. Accept your cross and follow me. I tell you not just to love your, your neighbor. Anybody can do that. I tell you to love your enemy. That takes strength. And these are the things that we prepare ourselves for during Advent. It's a preparation period. Let us not give in to all of this other stuff. Uh, of course, Advent, we cannot expect Advent to be such, like some people uh, 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 advise, you know, nothing concerning the coming feast. It is all draped in purple until Christmas Eve. And our children are not permitted to speak of Christmas even because somehow it is wrong. It is commercial. We must not do that. So our children say, hush, hush, hush. No, 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 no. We do not speak of Christmas. Not yet, not yet, not yet. So the children wait. They see all of their other playmates all full of excitement and all. And Christmas Day comes, and with the full flurry, we open our doors to Christmas. One day. Because the very next day, what does the world do? It puts Christmas away. And our little children have nobody to enjoy Christmas with. Let's use common sense in this. There's preparations to be made. There are things to do. The mother is busy cooking Christmas baking, cookies, cake. Festivity is around the corner. It is the birthday of the king. And such a king needs special preparation. It takes time to prepare for his birthday. And the children must understand that. And they see decorations going up here and there and wherever. We're doing it. We'll do it in the monastery. We don't care who knows it. We're getting ready for something. So my beloved people, 
living the Christian life demands common sense. And our Lord gave it to us. Yes, he said, take up your cross. From the time that he came to the time that he left, he suffered. We do not know the last, uh, <clears throat> the last time that we come into contact with him as a child was when he decided to stay back in Jerusalem and scared, frightened his mother and father greatly. From that moment, the next time that we get the first little idea of him was not long before the marriage feast when he was asked who are you and his answer very briefly was come and see And they did. And then we see again something that is very important. Our world is filled today with some very distorted notions. I said a moment ago, the father is a patriarch in the family. And so it holds. And the father gets his authority in that family by way of Christ because he takes the place of Christ in that family. And let him not forget that. At the marriage feast of Cana, is easy to assume that the Blessed Mother had something to do with the goings-on and the preparation or whatever. It's easy to assume that. And so she went to her son, who was also invited and all of his disciples were there, they were visitors at the party. And it's easy to assume what was taking place. She went to him. And she said, very simply, they have no wine. And he looked at her and said, in a manner of speaking, as we would say it today, that's none of your business. He said, what is that to thee? No argument. She merely turned to the people, to the men, the caretakers, or whoever they were, and simply said, whatever he says, you do. And she was gone. was she the woman who opened the door to the beginning of the work of Jesus Christ on this earth. power and the two of them as they were growing up we don't know what happened we can assume what happened during those many years between uh, uh, Jerusalem and Cana we don't know what happened but he, all we do know that he went down and was subject to their governance to their authority we know that that's all we know
and that which existed between Joseph and Mary and their son. Has to be. It must be. There can be no other way. That which must be in our own households. And it is because it is because the world insists on bringing things off center. And to the degree that things do get off center, to that degree do you have children leaving home? Do you have divorce? Once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, we make other people, we need to apologize to other people in history, uh, in history for what they've done. Have divorce, you have abortion, you have all the things of killing, murders, everything that we see today because the family got off center. Let's work by you, children of God, we, children of God, faithful children of God. You know what has to be, and we must do it. You must do it. Let there be no embarrassment to know whatever it is. It's the Jesus Christ was the highest ever on earth as a man. Which one of us could equal that man? And I'll go one step lower than Jesus Christ. I'll go to Joseph. Now, let's talk it over. Joseph had just been promised to this young girl, Mary, and that was that. And out of the clear blue sky, Mary went to Joseph and said, I am with child. Men, think it over. And how can this be? Men, think it over. And she said, the Holy Ghost has done this. Now can I ask you men, whoever you may be, what on earth would you say to something like that? That she who is to be your wife was carrying a baby that did not belong to you. Talk about strength. Just talk about it. Think about strength. What kind of strength this man Joseph 
must have had. He didn't say a single word. And he thought to put her away privately when then he was approached. And he was told, no, no, it is so. Which man on this earth, since or before, would have that kind of strength? This is all that we're asked to do, the little things that require great strength, great power, great faith, great trust, great belief, great humility, great meekness, great compassion and understanding, love, charity. That's all we're talking about. So with Advent, let us put things, everything in its, let us strive to, we can't all succeed, of course, but let's tr strive to put all things in their proper perspective. And the perspective is God. The ways of God are not of this world. And everything I say to you from here, outside that door, will be laughed at because the wisdom of the world is not as the wisdom of God. And if we wish to have wisdom, the wisdom of God, if we wish to have to save our souls, then we must follow that wisdom and that understanding. There is no other you are not forced under constraint to do that. It has to come entirely, totally, absolutely out of the freedom of your mind and your heart. And as I used the word yesterday, I use it in here. Fake. Just as we see through fakery, God sees it more clearly and will spit us out, those of us who are fake. It has to be pure as the driven snow, our intention. And that is why we can say with our whole hearts and our whole minds and our whole souls and our whole being, that's why we can say that. Because there is no fake in what we are talking about. Woe to him who is a fake. In Advent, my beloved people, is your time, our time, my time, to give unto God the things that are God's. And it is your time, our time, and my time to walk and take up our cross and follow him. My dearest people,